All right. Flurn. Who wants to do the intro for Flurn? Hi, welcome to Flurn. I'm your host, Air Nace. Hi, welcome to Flurn. Ah, ah. Hi, welcome to Flurn. I'm Air Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make a composite photo. All right, hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find us on Twitter at Flurn. We make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today we're doing something really cool. We're actually taking an image. This is from our latest pro tutorial, A Dark Force. And I'm gonna show you guys another version that we're doing exclusive right now. And we're taking another subject and we're gonna be putting it in our background. So we're gonna show you guys how to cut your subject out and do some really cool work with matching lighting from the background to make it look like the subject is actually in the photograph. All right, so here's what we're working with today. This is our background, which is the image from the Dark Force tutorial. And uh, you guys can find more information. Just click on the screen. We'll put a link here where you can find more information on the pro tutorial. It's awesome. It's four hours of Photoshop. And we show you guys how to do every, every, everything from making these things uh, in the background, adding the planets, the characters, and everything. So um, we're going to show you guys kind of like a little bonus tip today. I'm going to grab our move tool, and this is just uh, our subject that we photographed in the studio. I'm going to shift click and drag this from one image to another one, and then we're going to hit F for full screen and zoom in. So I'm going to show you guys how to cut someone out in a really cool way using basically the magic wand tool and a couple of the features that you might not have like seen before in the magic wand tool that make it a little bit easier. Okay, now the magic wand tool, if I just click on this image, and we're going to want to click sample all layers so I can, well, we'll just, actually we'll leave that off so I can just sample this layer for now. Okay, if I click on this image, you can see how much it's selecting. Now, if I want less to be selected, all I have to do is bring the tolerance down on this. Let's go to a tolerance of nine or something like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll bring it down even more, just a little bit till something like eight. Very cool. And you can see it's also like selecting where, basically pretty much where I'm clicking, right? It's just anywhere that I'm clicking, let's, it comes default with this contiguous button checked on. So if I click here, it's gonna select right about there. If I click there, it's gonna select something similar. Okay, and it stops basically when it reaches a different color, like it's selecting out the gray because we shot on a gray backdrop, but when it reaches you know, this different color, it's stopping, so it's not selecting this. But you could get in here and you can hold like the shift key down and continue to click all these little areas and things like that, or there's another really cool method you can use. And for this, we're gonna bring our tolerance down even more to about five, yeah, let's go to three, why not? There we go, looking cool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna unclick this contiguous. So it comes with contiguous checked by default. I'm gonna unclick this, and what it's basically gonna do now is it's gonna select in, on my entire image anything that's a similar color to exactly where I'm clicking. So it's gonna open up a lot of possibilities here. Let's say I, I click right over here, and I don't have contiguous checked. You can see it's not only selecting like where I actually clicked, but it's also selecting inside of this area and in all like the little fine details and things like that. So it's really getting in there and getting all those little details. Now I'm gonna see a lot of weird little fuzzy patches like this, not a big deal. Just hold down the shift key and click right over there and we're gonna be able to see that this is just gonna be able to select those areas out. So what I'm doing now is just shift clicking and going around shift clicking. Sounds like a skateboarding move, I'm shift clicking, whatever. Um, we're just going around here and I'm clicking to basically select different areas or right around my photo. Now whenever you guys are doing this, it might be like kind of tempting to actually select your subject, but if you're photographing someone, especially like this on a blank backdrop, it actually makes a lot more sense to select out your backdrop because that's like, you know, that's like a really nice clean selection and then you could just invert your selection so it actually selects your, uh, your person out or your product or your um, dog or whatever you guys took a picture of. Um, but this is basically like the, you know, the very basic parts of compositing, just helping you cut someone out of their background. Okay, and that's a pretty good selection there. Uh, we can see we've got a relatively clean line around our subject. Now all this other stuff, I'm not gonna worry about with the magic wand tool because it's, if I go in here and start clicking everything like that, it, it's just gonna start um, getting all fuzzy and messed up and I, I really only need the selection around my subject to be nice so I can use other tools like the lasso tool or even the marquee tool uh, to take care of all the other stuff, which is what we're gonna do. Okay, you also know there's some selection, some areas that didn't get selected inside of our subject, like here on the ammo belt and on the, on the staff and things like that. And that we're gonna take care of afterwards as well. So this is, it's really cool because selections we're gonna load into a layer mask. And as long as you've got your layer mask, 
you can keep editing it over and over and over again. So don't feel like you got to get the perfect selection right from the get-go. Okay, so now that we have this selection, we're going to click on our layer mask button. And we said earlier, it's actually going to be the inverse, right? So I'm going to hit Command-I, and that's going to invert our layer mask. Okay, so now we can see all this other stuff in the background. I'm just going to grab our regular lasso tool and make a selection right around that. There we go. We can hit Shift, Delete, and say Fill with Black. And that's just going to fill our layer mask with black. And keep in mind, anything that is black on a layer mask is not going to be visible. Anything that's white is going to be visible. All right, there we go. And I'm selecting this out, Shift, Delete, and fill that with black as well. There we go. So now we can see we're actually really well cut out. And the cool thing, because I unchecked this contiguous box, is like it's getting all these little details and things like that, like inside of the fabric and whatnot, even like right through the fabric. You can see right there. Very, very cool. Now let's go ahead and like figure out what's going on here with the, uh, with the areas that didn't get selected within our subject. To see this a little bit clearer, I'm just going to hold Alt or Option and click on my layer mask. And now we can kind of see what our layer mask looks like uh, just in black and white, which is really helpful. So now I'm going to use this lasso tool and we're just going to make a selection right around there. And I'm going to hit Command Delete, which Command Delete, by the way, fills with your background color. In this case, my background color is white. All right. So I'm just making these selections and then filling them with white. So we're not going to see through our subject in these areas. Like we don't, we don't need to see through the, these areas. All right. There we go. And that looks really good. So let's hit Alter Option and click on this Delete again. There we go. And clean this where there was a, I guess there was a C stand coming out of his head there. OK. That looks great. So this is like a start to the image. Now we've got him kind of like figured out. And this is like what I would consider a pretty rough cutout job. If you guys want to get a lot more like in depth to get the perfect selections, that's what our pro tutorial is for. But this should get you like most of the way. So I'm going to hit Command T now. And then we're going to hold down the Shift and Alt or Option. And that'll let us uh, scale our subject like about the midpoint. So Shift and Option and kind of like figure out where we want them to go and somewhere around there looks cool. I like the little swirly thing that kind of comes right around there. All right, that looks great. Now, there are a couple things that I'd like to do for color matching our guy to the background. Um, one is the background has a little bit more red than he has on his layer. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab an adjustment layer. We're going to go to Curves and then I'm going to hit Option Command G and that's going to clip this curves adjustment layer to our subject, which means that anything I do on this layer, like if I make it darker, lighter, whatever, it's only going to affect the subject, right? It's not affecting the background layer. That's what clipping does. It's really, really cool. All right, let's reset that. And now I'm going to go to our red channel and just click in the middle and then use my up arrow a couple times. There we go. And that's just going to make our subject a little bit more on the red side. And I think it's a little too saturated as well. So I'm going to go to hue saturation, option command G again to clip that. And we're going to bring that down a little bit. All right. And I think I put a little bit too much red on him that time. All right. There we go. And let's go to our blue channel. And I'm going to bring the blue channel down just a little bit as well. So he gets that like, nice orange look. The nice orangeness going on. All right. And we can bring our saturation down even more to kind of match the background a little bit better. OK, looking really good. So you can see, first part is cutting him out, and then we'll do some light color matching. So there's the before and the after with the color matching. It's, you know, in this case, it's not hugely apparent because he was actually pretty close. So the before and the after is not like a crazy difference. But even just a little bit of difference, like if someone's a little bit too yellow or a little bit too green or something like that, get in there and try to change those colors. It's going to make a di big difference. OK, the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to create a new layer, and we're going to clip that as well. And this time, I'm just going to grab my brush tool, and we're going to grab this uh, color from the sun right here. And we're just going to paint like right over top of our subject. And the reason I'm doing this is basically because we want some of like the flare or some of the background to kind of come over top of our subject. And it really helps with the like blending of the light to make it look like they're in the scene. Uh, I'm just going to do it, and then you can see, like, oh, yeah, that does help. All right, let's double click here. And I'm going to hold Alt or Option and tell this layer to not be visible where the underlying layer is darker. So Alt or Option, and we just go from the left all the way to the right here and hit OK. So we can see that it doesn't look like it did a lot, but like turning this off and on, 
you can see like how it actually gets the color from the background. We're going to do that again here on, on these other areas of the photo as well. And I'm just sampling from the background and kind of painting in over top. So this is like definitely a pro technique here. This is not your amateur level stuff. Some, this is big boys and big girls. <laughs> All right, I'm just in a really silly mood today. I'm about to board a flight to Las Vegas, by the way. I'm going to WPPI um, in like an hour. So <laughs> if you guys are going to WPPI this year, which is in Las Vegas, it's, uh, um, it's awesome. It's a really good time. It's a really great networking event. Anyway, if you're going to be there, um, give me a shout out because I'll be there too. So um, if you see me, just come up and say hi. Don't, you know, don't feel weird about it. <laughs> I'm just a normal dude. All right, here on the layer style, I'm gonna hold, again, Alt or Option, and I'm gonna go from the left to the right. There we go, one more time. There we go, and we'll lower our opacity again. Very, very cool. So we can see this, this is basically the, like, the fundamental work of how you cut someone out from the background and put them onto another image, and this way you can photograph someone in your studio, create a crazy amazing background, and then have it look like this person's actually in the background, which is so cool. So here's our, let's just show you the before, so someone's not cut out from the background, there they are cut out, with a little bit of color matching, they fit right into the scene, and uh, that's it for our tutorial, guys. Thanks so much for watching Flurn. If you guys enjoyed this, check out our pro tutorial. Um, it's awesome, it really is. It's like four hours long, and we show you guys how to do all of this stuff, and I, I'm, I'm really proud of this one, actually. <laughs> we put a lot of work into it, it's really, really good. So, thank you so much for watching Flurn. Whether you enjoy our free episodes or our pros, we're just happy you're watching. Thanks, and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want. Comment down below and share with your friends. All right, guys, we'll flurn you later. Bye, everyone.